Hi, so this is uh, another video showing how we can uh, use the new uh, Ableton Live 10 feature related to multi-channel uh, from and to uh, Max for Live devices. So I just created a um, basic um, device in Max for Live named Drums and um, this device is basically um, listening uh, the MIDI um, input flowing into this proper device from uh, anything, basically something coming from the outside of uh, live. But in that case, I will use a MIDI clip I already created like that. And um, basically, I created this device uh, with the new Ableton Live 10 feature in mind uh, related to um, output uh, audio signal from a Max for Live device like that in one track. I put these signals in multiple different independent tracks like that. So I named them channel 1, 2, 3 and 4. And um, this device um, contains an object named Plugout with 3, 4, 5, 6. And um, as uh, shown in uh, the previous video, uh, these uh, different uh, references are related to what we can have in audio routing um, part of each track like that. So in the channel, uh, the track named channel one, I'm grabbing the audio signal coming from the um, first track from the device named drums, and uh, basically I choose the third and four like that, third and fourth, and this one is five and six, etc. I committed the monitor for each uh, different track. On, uh, in, uh, so it's permanently uh, listening uh, the signal coming from this device uh, at any time, even if I don't arm the track. And um, basically, I also use the utility device just for uh, grabbing uh, in the one named channel one, the first uh, channel, which is thirds here, okay. So I have the utility on left here, on this one on right, and on this one on left, and the last one on right, just in order to have the six. So basically, I will have um, all my uh, plug out input here uh, addressed to uh, each independent track in life. So uh, basically, this device is just is just uh, listening the MIDI flow coming from the clip. So I used. Um, something I'm, I used to teach to my students in my different courses, uh, which is named a not on selector. So basically, if I show you this device, you understand what is going on inside. So I'm using a MIDI select uh, object, which is uh, basically selecting only a note, um, in that case, a note 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, so this is why in my clip I'm using only my note, this note coming from this part, so I can also fold my uh, clip. And uh, I have the, this one is the note 1, 2, 3, 4. And basically this is what uh, I have uh, in that device. So if I use this one, I can just basically change the order of the list. This object is popping out from this output. A list uh, basically this is the pitch of the MIDI note incoming and uh, the velocity so by using ZL root uh, minus one like that I'm just changing the order and uh, I have at the output of this object uh, basically something like velocity and the pitch so by using root zero, zero I can just uh, remove all um, all MIDI note of message so I can just have a, only basically the MIDI note on, which is the start of the note, the beginning of the note. And then by using unjoin, I'm just uh, grabbing, uh, I can do something like that, and uh, I'm just grabbing the number of the note. So basically, at this output uh, of this uh, subpatcher, I only have one number, which is the pitch of the note. At the moment when the not on is uh, just uh, starting, okay. So uh, if I start my stuff like that, I can just show you. 
So here is a bit too fast. So I have a flow of a number like that, which is corresponding to um, my notes popping out from uh, the clip immediately. And this is a way for basically triggering things. And uh, basically I'm synthesizing sounds uh, by using only cycle, triangle, uh, pink noise and uh, white noise here. And uh, I use a function object just for creating an envelope for each of my sounds. So uh, I have uh, each note triggering this envelope. So basically when I receive a MIDI, uh, when I send a MIDI note on the set from with a specific pitch. I'm just figuring the first part of my drum synthesizer, or the second part, or third part, etc. Okay, and um, so I save that, and basically, because I just addressed each each of uh, each part of my synthesizer to different uh, channel here, I can just have my this part, of this first synthesizer popping out in this. So this is the interesting part because I can just record the sound coming from just this part of my uh, Mac for Life device. Even if my Mac for Life device is uh, synthesizing multiple channels, so I can just use it in my garage. Okay. And I just control my synthesizer. So basically, just remember that this device is in the first track and uh, the sound is listened in that track, okay? So I'm sending basically each signal here into different and independent channel, sorry, independent tracks in life, okay? So here yeah, we are doing something like very, 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 very basic uh, frequency modulation, okay? okay? So I can so just change the duration of my envelope. I can change the attack like that. So you can do that also. Change the basic frequency of my stuff. So I have a random block like that. basically an audio signal and a source signal for each track so I can use that as any sound source so I can do that in my audio flow like that I could also add some uh, audio effects like the version or this one so I have only one um, Max for Life device popping out multiple signals like that. And basically, I can alter that by using also envelope automation and stuff. But the um, very interesting point and new feature here in the button like 10 is the fact that we can have one device like that sending multiple signals and we can grab that in different tracks in the live sets. Okay? So. I will do my best to make some other demos like that, uh, specifically by using some kind of ambisonic stuff. But uh, I heard about some uh, new ambisonics, high order ambisonics library, opening out new Mac for Live device directly. So I think we will have a lot of fun with uh, this new feature in Ableton Live 10. Bye!